The scene tonight is downtown Hartford, Connecticut, as we close in on our main event in this latest installment of Showtime Championship Boxing. The spotlight falls on a former light heavyweight champion coming back after launching a career on the silver screen and a year-long layoff. And time now for the results of our text message question. Who do you think would win a matchup between Tarver and Dawson? We asked you and you responded. And how close is this, Al? Wow, my, my, how soon they forget. Tarver away for a year and Chad Dawson with these two great performances. And he moves ahead in the voting. But Antonio Tarver still has his debate to come. Maybe he can change a little bit of the thoughts of fans. Dawson by two percentage points, 51% to 49% over Tarver. Well, tonight it's the return of Antonio Tarver as he squares off with a very, very confident Elver Marecki, who says that Magic Man's thoughts of victory are merely an illusion. Elvin Mariki has to mix things up, work both the outside and the inside. He is an excellent body puncher, and the hook can certainly get through. Now, Bernard Hopkins was able to sneak through some good right hands against Tarver, and Mariki may be able to do that, too. His right hand is not a devastating punch, but it's delivered quickly, and it can have big results, as it did here against James Crawford. For Tarver, a pawing jab gets him in trouble. He needs to throw it with a lot of conviction. Wild punching against Hopkins left him off balance and vulnerable. None of that tonight. His bread and butter is the straight left hand. And this scenario could play itself out tonight. A partially landed jab left Glenn Johnson open to the left hand which Tarver was only too happy to deliver. This is exactly what Tarver wants tonight. Here in Hartford, Tarver now 38 years old, a decade older than Mariki, but Tarver clearly has the physical advantages. He is three inches taller. He has the one and a half inch edge in reach. And at yesterday's weigh-in, Tarver right on the money at 175, Mariki 173 and three quarters. And the key unified rules for this fight, there is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four, they go to the cards. If a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter can't continue, he loses by TKO. So here at the Connecticut Convention Center in Hartford, getting ready for our main event, Antonio Tarver versus Elvir Mariki for the vacant fringe IBO light heavyweight title. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Gentlemen, we welcome you to the Connecticut Convention Center here in Hartford, Connecticut, for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you courtesy of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing, in association with Gary Shaw Productions, AT Entertainment, CES, Mohegan Sun, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the IBO. The President, Ed Levine, supervisor is Hilton Whitaker III, along with the Connecticut Department of Public Safety, Commissioner is John Danaher, Deputy Commissioner Colonel Thomas Daverin, and the Director of Boxing is Michael Kastriva. Our physicians at ringside tonight, Dr. Michael Schwartz and Dr. Anthony Alessi, timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Phyllis Roy and Kim Johnston. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From Miami, Florida, John Rupert. And from Rivervale, New Jersey, Stephen Weisfeld. Introducing our third man to the ring, our referee in charge of this bout, Michael Ortega. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Hartford, Connecticut, 
It's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with black trim, fighting out of the Bronx, New York, by way of Kosovo. He weighed in at a ready 173 and three quarter pounds with a record of 34 wins and three losses. He has 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the exciting fighter known as the Kosovo Kid. Introducing opponent across the ring on my left fighting out of the red corner the man who previously held this title wearing silver trunks with black trim fighting out of Tampa Florida he weighed in at the light heavyweight limit of 175 pounds with a record of 24 wins and four losses he has 18 wins coming by way of knockout please welcome the former WBC WBA and I IBF light heavyweight champion of the world. Here is one of boxing's most recognized talents. Introducing Antonio, the magic man, Tarver. Once again, a referee in charge is Michael Ortega. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing schedule. Gentlemen, we went over the rules. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Okay? From here, up is good. Here, up is good. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. We were curious to see if Carver would offer up any choice words, as he's done before following the instructions, as he alluded to in the Jim Gray interview. But alas... He's all business, Sal. <laughs> We've come to expect some glib yes. comment at that point. Well, tonight he'll be going up against Elvir Mariki, a physically strong, rugged competitor, but has never fought at this level. But which Tarver will we see tonight? The Tarver versus Hopkins or the Tarver versus Jones, particularly those last two versus Jones. Remember, Tarver was physically manhandled by a smaller, older man in his last fight. Still, it would be a huge surprise, not to mention an unthinkable career setback. If Tarver were to lose tonight, it could make him a full-time actor. You, uh, you know, the other thing that's interesting is, will all this emotion in this building be a help or a hindrance to Elvin Mariki? Will it make him start too fast? Will it make him take too many chances? It's an interesting question, and we'll see it played out in these first couple of rounds. Well, he gets the offense going. We'll see if... Uh, He's a little over anxious. He has been unruffled by the surroundings, the environment here up to this point. Tarver has been known to coast through the first two minutes of many rounds, then steal them in the final 30 seconds by flurrying. Will he be cautious at the start? Or will he come out more aggressively? Right now, very cautious. Carver, as you can see, a big, tall, sharp-punching southpaw, fights tall. Mariki kind of got a sneaky right hand in there. That's a punch he very much wants to land in this fight. Carver being extremely patient. He has that knockout punch. The booming left over the top is his signature weapon. Dangerous with both hands, of course, and so explosive when he gets a guy on the ropes. little body work there by Mariki. If he can get inside against Tarver, which is part of the, he wants to be there part of the time at least, he'll work the body. Mariki insists he is not just an opponent. He's won three straight, 21 of his last 23, but mainly nondescript guys. Little chopping right hand on the inside. When you get inside against Antonio Tarver, you give yourself a better chance to win. Tarver's kind of like the old Green Bay Packers. You know, run that sweep, and you thought, I can stop this. He is, in some ways, one-dimensional, but it's hard to stop. He stays on the outside. He throws the jab, the straight left hand, and he picks you apart with it if you 
stay out there. He's versatile. He can box or brawl. He can come forward or lay back and counter. Maricki prefers to fight a tactical fight. But a boxer puncher who fancies himself more of a fast puncher as he chops to the head of Tarver as opposed to a big power puncher. The left hand got in by Antonio Tarver's Maricki kind of rushed in and squared himself up. That's something Maricki has to be concerned about doing. Tarver missing. Maricki getting inside, going to the body, missing from the outside with the right. Several low blows by Maricki. He hasn't really got a warning yet for those, and Tarver hasn't complained. Final seconds of the opening round, scheduled for 12 for a fringe light heavyweight bill. to the future with trainer Jimmy Williams. Look here. Just take your time. You see what's going on. You need to, you need to keep your jabs on this guy. This guy can play. Tom, okay, where's him up? Tom getting off to a little bit of a slow start in this fight. And for Mariki, that right hand got in. It wasn't a great right hand, but it showed he can find the range. And later on in the round, Kind of from a, more of an inside posture. This is the kind of right hand that Hopkins landed often against Tarver. That one on the back of the neck. When you're inside like that, you can land a clubbing right hand against Tarver. This guy can't fight. Uh, 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 77 year young Jimmy Williams, Tarver's original trainer, returns to. Antonio's corner replacing longtime coach Buddy McGirt, who had his hands full. McGirt uh, trains in Vero Beach, and Tarver did not want to go down there and share the gym with all the fighters. He went home, actually sent his wife, Denise, away for three weeks. Is that, is that advisable of my husband? No. <laughs> well, I'm sure she is uh, watching intently. I'm sure this. she is. Nice hook by Mariki. So he's, he's sh relatively sharp early in this fight. And Tarver, of course, has yet to really unleash a strong offense. For the record, Mariki 2 0 versus Southpaws. Both were first round knockouts, but nobody in Tarver's league. I'll tell you what Alvin Mariki is doing so far, though, that's really good. He's slipping a lot of these outside punches. That jab got through for Tarver. But on the outside, instead of Tarver completely picking him apart, Mariki is really slipping these punches well. He's got to be careful throwing that right. Knowing that it could be countered by Tarver's big left. And it was by the left hand. The jab by Mariki. Right hand of the body by Mariki. More body shot by Mariki with a right uppercut. See, I think Elvira Mariki needs to be in the inside more than the outside. Because of that, he can work. Antonio Tarver has never liked inside fighting. Glenn Johnson got a lot done against him on the inside. From the outside, you ask for trouble against Tarver. Bernard Hopkins had success against Tarver uh, by roughing him up yep. and jumping on him, making Tarver move rapidly, using old tricks. And uh, we're seeing a little bit of that here mm -hmm. by Mariki as he tries to rough Tarver up. But Tarver's done better in this round because he's used his jab and straight left like that from the outside. Mariki on the inside from close range, but he's getting battered. And Mariki says, bring it on. Antonio Tarver found the uppercut. Now he's landing those night nice straight punches. Tarver now jumping all over Mariki. He has found the opening. And Mariki wisely step holds back, on. Back. Hey, don't hold him. Getting the warning though from Michael Ortega. Tarver looking extremely confident right now. Just playing around, almost toying with Mariki at times. You know, Mariki is not jabbing his way in there. He jabbed his way in, then he was able to get it right to the body. So he's staying on the outside too much, Mariki, and there's where he's at play. I mean, he really low. A very low blow by Mariki. It's a nice jab by Mariki up top, backing Tarver up. Tarver trying to set up the big left with the jab. Ricky landed with a uh, left hand to the head of Tarver. 
but not a lot of pop behind it. Time! And a little bravado from Maricki. Keep it down. All right, when you shoot, slip, get in. Stop trying to run, pull away from him. Just make him miss. Keep him backing up, all right? Come on. It's washed? Good. Give me some water. Give me some water. Give me some water. Give me a bottle of water. When Elvira right? Maricki misses with the right hand, as he will here, it opens up the left counter by Antonio Tarver. There's the right off the chest, but he kept that right hand low and he got countered very effectively by Antonio Tarver. Then Tarver would land another straight left hand later in the round, so that's his big weapon. That is what he wants to land. And Ricky's landed a lot of low punches in this fight, and I would think pretty soon he is in a position where he might get a point deducted, so he has to be very careful about that. Tarver with a wink to somebody in the crowd doesn't seem to be showing much ring rust after being off for the year. Maricki. Let's see if he tries to get inside again, but he's got to watch out for those countering hard lefts by Tarver. He's best when he boxes, lets his hands go, doesn't look to end it with one punch. You can feel Tarver getting more comfortable uh, in the second round. You know, he hasn't fought for a year and got through that first round and now using the jab very effectively. Elva Mariki will not win this fight on the outside. I absolutely assure you. He needs to jab his way in and then, oh, then unleash punches when he gets on the inside. Otherwise, he won't win. That's what he needs to do. And if I was him, I'd work that body in the first five rounds like there's no tomorrow. That's what he told us in the fighter meeting yesterday. That's the key to victory for Mariki. Work that body. But he's got to be careful when he gets in close range because Tarver's punches are punishing. They can really take a lot out of the opponent. Now, in this round, Mariki has landed four or five very good body shots. Back. Step back. Watch your head coming in. Watch your head. You know, Antonio Tarver has fought an amazing schedule. Since 2002, eight of his nine opponents were current or former champions. People like Roy Jones Jr. fought three times, Montel Griffin, uh, Bernard Hopkins, Glenn Johnson, Reggie Johnson. He has fought an amazing array of fighters over the last four or five years. This has been not a bad round for Elvin Mariki. He's landed a lot of good body punches and mixing his attack up as well. Body punch there by Mariki. There's a left hand by Mariki that got in. Tarver controlling most of the round, and suddenly Mariki comes alive here in the final minute. Yeah, he's had a good second half of this round, and the body work even early by Mariki, pretty good. Now, lots of times judges don't give you credit for that, so it'll be interesting to see how this round is scored. The jab of Tarver a factor now as it was early in the round. Mariki puts Tarver up on the ropes momentarily, but Tarver gets off Punch quickly. behind the head. Watch it. The caution from Ortega for Mariki hitting behind the head. The rabbit punches on Tarver. Now he goes downstairs. I see it. I see it. It's all right. Ortega approves of that punch. It wasn't low. <laughs> He's, Mariki has had a few low ones in this fight. Nice left hand by Tarver. He's not as fluid here in round three with that jab and left hand as he was, although that was a nice combination. Very nice combination offered up by Tarver in the final seconds of round three. Nice feint by Mariki. That's something he should do more of. Oh, nice round. Interesting Mariki's round. Yeah, looking very confident. We're back in action in Bridgeport, Connecticut, July 7th. As tremendous Travis Sims will defend his WBA Super Welterweight title against Joaquim Alcin. There's Travis enjoying the action here in the crowd. Great performance in winning the title. And of course, uh, nearby Bridgeport, uh, his domain. Yeah, he's uh, uh, from Norwalk, where he's yeah. uh, hoping someday to be the mayor. Yes, well, he's an active champion. Yeah, exactly. We've Carver's an actor. He's a mayor. Is anybody just a boxer? Yeah. <laughs> you don't, want to don't see that anymore. He's got you. When he got his hands down, this is what he thinks. Look here. Look here. I need you to whack. go down to the body. You're standing too tall. Double up on you. Pick it up now. 
Okay. Don't be so unconcerned. Okay? okay. When I buy that jab, that jab is worth it. I want you to stop busting this guy at home. Jimmy Williams in boxing over 50 years says he's come back to finish the job he started, hoping to guy Tarver back to the championship throne. Round four, Maricki coming on towards the latter stages of round three. This is scheduled for 12 for a fringe 175 pound tight. Tarver, his first fight back in a year, letting his hands go. Getting a lot more comfortable with each round. Body shots there by Tarver. Tarver really punching in volume now. I think Tarver knew that uh, things were slipping away a little bit in round three. I actually gave two of the rounds so far to Mariki. The third was very, very close. But there comes Mariki out. And this is what Mariki does best. Get on the inside and be active. And he landed with a nifty right uppercut. So we've seen the best of both fighters here in round four. The outside work like this from Tarver and Mariki very effective on the inside. Excellent sequence by Mariki. Yes, again, punches up. a booming right to the body, but Ortega cautions him about the low blow. Uh, Michael Ortega showing a lot of restraint with Mariki in terms of those low blows, I have to say. He has been known to go south of the border. It's another one that was questionable. But meantime, a lot of legal body punches are landing by Mariki. And I'll tell you, you're facing a 38-year-old who's been off for a year. And you want to do that body work, and it may pay dividends later in this fight. The longer this fight goes out, the more of an advantage it is for uh, Tarver. Uh, Mariki has never been involved in a 10-round or a 12-round decision, never passed eight rounds. So his his stamina, his conditioning could be tested. But of course, that equation may change if Ricky lands a lot of those great body punches. So we'll see how it goes. Well, hold nice left cross there by Antonio Tarver. Tarver scoring almost at will here in round four. Here's a left-right combination. Tarver has the reach advantage by an inch and a half. And he's using that right here. Nice right hand upstairs by uh, Mariki goes to the body and then to the chin of Tarver. Makes Tarver backpedal momentarily. Antonio Tarver felt that right hand. And I'll tell you what's having a bigger effect on the body shots of Mariki. That's a very close fight right now. Both men are doing some of what they want to do. Mariki uh, really holding his own here against the, the former light heavyweight champion of the world. Nice straight left hand to the head by Tarver. As he backs Mariki to the ropes, that's not where Mariki wait, wants to wait, be. Tarver's so explosive on the ropes. Time. Round four of the books. Interesting round. <laughs> The guy can't, look here. This guy can't fight backing up. Okay. Don't back out on him. You got to back him up. I don't see you backing up. Okay. You don't need to back up with this guy. You understand? Bend your knees. Look here. With the jab. Let's show you. Well, as Jimmy Williams points out, Welcome when Harper goes backwards, he has some issues. The jab sends him back. Every time Mariki double jabs, there's the right hand that got into the head, and then he digs body shots, which is just as important, and the uppercut. So Mariki on the inside is a good inside fighter when he can get there. But on the outside, Antonio Tarver does this. This is what he does. Jab, straight left hand. He does mostly that. He's, that is his game plan. But you know what? It's hard to stop. But Mariki, look, when he's in this posture, he's not going to get in with a jab and a straight right hand, is he? He's going to work Antonio Tarver like Bernard Hopkins did. So this is becoming a fascinating strategic fight. So here we go into round five, scheduled for 12. Elber Mariki from the Bronx, New York, originally from Kosovo. But he's got the fans behind him here. Here's a good left cross to the jaw by Antonio Tarver. Another left hand by Tarver. That is straight left upstairs. Back comes Mariki with a right hand to the midsection. 
Now, when Mariki does one of two things, he can get on the inside, either fainting with his head or jabbing. Mariki continues to boom to the body of Antonio. Oh, a big smacking right hand to the chin by Mariki. Mariki scoring. Mariki looking impressive here in round five. When he can't hit Tarver to the head, he throws to the body, and that is very, very impressive. Look how close it is along press road. And one has Mariki ahead. I have Mariki ahead by point 39, 38 him in the fourth round even. He's got him ahead by two points. Yeah. So perilous waters for Antonio Tarver, at least along press row and in the eyes of Mr. Bernstein. Well, it's been a very interesting fight so far. And, you know, Tarver hasn't hurt him on the outside by hitting him with those straight left hands when he has landed. Tarver backing Mariki up with the left hand. But Mariki bounces right off the ropes. This fight is, this round has been this fight in microcosm. Really good work in the inside by Mariki, and then occasionally a good jab and straight left hand by Tarver. The workman like Elva Mariki. Every time Mariki jabs, he can walk right in and then throw body punches to the and head punches. So when he doesn't jab and stands on the outside, Tarver does this thing. And now Mariki holds on. on the back. First round in round five. Less than a minute hey, remaining watch in this round. Here, watch your head. clash heads. Oh, there's a cut on the side yeah. of Mariki's eye. That's a shame that this fight's affected by a cut. And now, and now Tarver goes to work. To be a very big altering event in this fight. There's no question it came from a clash of heads. And there is blood streaking down the right side of Mariki. I'm looking to see if it goes into the eye. It's sort of around the right eye. Time, guys, time. Time, time. They move to a corner. Michael Ortega asks for the doctor. That's an headbutt. Okay. And quickly the doctor says corner. it's fine. The, some Stay of there. the blood may be Stay going there. into the right eye, but it looks like it's going around the eye for the most part. Elver Mariki. Hey. Step out. Box. fight that's for sure if a fight is stopped by an accidental headbutt before the end of the fourth round the fighters rule they know decision after the end of the fourth they go to the scorecards Elvia, Elvia, Elvia. 10 seconds to go and trying to steal the rungs you know this already what the hell are you doing 10 seconds time up hello is this, uh, time up at 10 seconds to go come on give me this point give me this point give me this point don't worry guys give me this point Elvira Mariki able to get his right hand in frequently. This was early in the round, and that backed Tarver up and gave him a chance to work the body a little bit, ultimately, and throw these combinations on the, when he got Tarver against the ropes. However, a seminal moment in this fight. This is where their heads come together. Was that intentional by Antonio Tarver, or was it an accident? In any case, they clashed heads, cut on the right eye of Mariki, and it altered that round, and certainly Tarver ended up winning it. Now, if they would stop this fight because of that, they would go to the score. We could win. We could win, but as this goes on, if Tarver wins a round or two because of that cut, we'll see what happens. Ortega did say it was an accidental head, but we heard him say that to the doctor. So they go to the cards at this point, from this point on. He just stood there and took it. Well, now, Tarver going to town. It's going to be time for Mariki to work his way on the inside and get something done and, lo and, move and let his hands go. These are punishing blows by Tarver, but back comes Mariki. Undaunted. Mariki uh, perhaps sensing some urgency here with that cut around the right eye. He's going for it. This is really important for Mariki in this round. 
because he's got to show he's still in this fight, show that the cut is not affecting him so badly that he can't function. It takes about a round for that coagulant substance to take effect to stop the blood from going into the eye. But nothing seems to be stopping Maricki. You know, Antonio Tarver is backing himself he into the road. Not really the posture he wants. And, it, you know, Antonio looks like he's fighting a fight in which he is marshalling his resources, which might be smart, given that he's back from a year layoff. And certainly he's probably winning this sixth round. That's yeah, sort of a... Uh, an inconsistent fight by Tarver. He, he, at times he looks good, sharp, and yeah. other times rusty. Very cautious. Very erratic performance here by Tarver, I'd say. But again, quite understandable after a year layoff, and of course, the listless performance with Hopkins. Now he is winning this sixth round, make no mistake about that. He's throwing a lot of punches here. Let's see if that is an impact on Tarver over the next couple of rounds. Yeah, but will that tire him out? Yeah. yeah, but he's certainly accurate with his punches, and he is certainly having his best round of the fight here in round six. Nice left hand there by Tarver. It pushed by Ricky back. Ricky targeting the body. Back comes Tarver with a straight left hand. What else is new? We approach the final 30 seconds of round six. Ev's really getting intriguing. You know, Mariki really needs to throw that jab. It pushes Tarver back against the ropes, and then he can throw his shot. Ricky trying to rub the blood out of his uh, right eye with the right glove. Bangs away at Tarver. Tarver offers up the jab. Mariki very active, very busy. Left hand by Tarver that scores right on the nose. Step back, clean. Step back. back. Time. Well, Ricky's cut man is Mike Rilla. And he's got his work cut out. You got him in the corner, Viri. Let like your hands go. You understand? Okay, all right. okay, okay, okay. okay. Don't, don't give him a break when you got him in the, okay. against the ropes. Okay, he's wide open. Okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. You start the run good, you're doing good, then you lock him and let him get catch up. Then he's trying to steal the run. You hit him, you either tie him up or you stay away that you can't touch him. And thank you. All right. The Tarver left hand trying to target that that eye. And there's a beauty. I'll tell you, it, it, you commented at the time, Steve, shocking that that didn't hurt Mariki more than it did. Then Mariki did what he's done in many spots in this fight. Gets Tarver against the ropes and lands some pretty good shots to both the body and the head. Finally, again, the left hand would become a factor for Tarver. It's his big weapon, and boy, he's able to set it up, and he's so quick at unleashing it. Trainer Colin Morgan telling Mariki Box. some good instructions there. You may recall Morgan had Larry Donald when he beat Evander Holyfield in 2004. Donald was supposed to be a tune-up. He dominated Holyfield. Mariki is supposed to be a tune-up for Tarver. Will history repeat for Colin Morgan? Round seven, scheduled for 12. Nice, nice jab there by uh, Tarver, but back comes Mariki. Ricky proving to be a rough customer here. Elvin Mariki spending too much time on the outside right now. Let's see if it can maneuver uh, into closer range. His press roll continues to be very tight. I have a 58-57 for Tarver at this juncture. They've got it as a majority decision for uh, Tarver. The three press row judges. When Mariki jabs or double jabs, he does well. When he doesn't, he doesn't. There is not much margin for error here for uh, Elva Mariki, that's for sure. And you, you hit on it, Mariki is not has not been a long way in fights, only has been eight rounds in his professional career. So can he sustain that kind of attack over the hall, long haul? Never passed eight. Good left hand there by Tarver. This is a very close round here in round seven. Tarver 12 rounds eight times in his uh, career where he's four and four. But 
He's coming off that long yep. year layoff, so that's a, that could be a factor. Exactly right. You know, of all 38-year-olds, though, he started at 28 and has not had uh, a lot of punishing fights, and really, he can make the case that at 38, he's in better shape than some other 38. Yeah, he's certainly well-rested, that's for sure. Yeah. But ring rust could be a factor as this fight draws on. Mariki gets a couple of shots in. Tarver's clowning around. He better be careful. He's Tarver. landing there, though, Tarver. Yeah, he's using the uppercut better, Antonio Tarver. See, that's where Tarver gets in trouble, when he throws kind of wide, awkward yeah. right hooks. And then he's off balance. Yeah, afterwards. I mean, he's really a jab, straight left hand, uppercut kind of guy. There that's was. all he should throw. That was the jab straight left, minus the uppercut. There's a straight left through the guard. He pushed Murky back. The other thing Antonio Tarver is doing, even though he's winning this round, I believe, he's leaning in with his head. That's never a good sign for Tarver. He should fight tall and maybe some sign of fatigue. We'll see. But Mariki hasn't been that sharp either in this round. Time. A very interested spectator, Chad Dawson. He's seeing Antonio Tarver fight. He tells us for the first time in person. Is he studying his next opponent? He's got no legs. He got to back this guy up, top. Uh, got to double up on your jabs, okay? Don't do the plum When Elvin Mariki jabs his way in, look what happens. He will throw the jab, actually a double jab, which is even better. And it always, even though he got hit with the jab, look what this does. It gives him a chance to chase him to the ropes and work to the body and the head. And... Now, if he comes in without that jab, look at what happens to him. Well, now that time he missed with the jab, but he got hit with the straight left hand by Tarver. So he's got a double jab and then push his way in. And Antonio Tarver, almost like a home run hitter in baseball, likes to extend his arms, gives himself punching room, and then swings for the fences. Let's go. But Mariki has been able to get inside it on top at times and also hold on to Tarver which is uh, very intelligent. We're at a point in this bout where Tarver is taking control of several rounds and now it's time if Elvin Mariki is going to hang in this fight and have a chance to win he's going to have to start making something happen I think in the safe round. And if he is indeed a tune-up he is a very tough tune-up. Absolutely he's already done a good job for himself but this is where all the people that predicted Mariki could be an A-list light heavyweight. You, when he, call, you called him a potential A-list fighter. Exactly. This is where he now has to show that he can step it up and do that. Round 8 scheduled for 12. Fringe light heavyweight crown on the line. But a lot more than that, as you know. Big left hand by Tarver. Tarver is now picking him yeah. apart on the outside. He looks very determined right now. He's trying to discourage Mariki, but that's going to take a lot. Boy, that was a great move by Mariki. He faked with the right, he held up, and then nailed Tarver with the left. Kind of a stutter step move. That, that left was blocked. Those are not being blocked. Tarver all over Mariki. That's a big left hand. Mariki's been down six times in his career, but not in this fight. And not close to going down in this fight. And Antonio Tarver has landed some very nice shots. Now, that's a big flurry. If you're Mariki and you can do it, this is the time to pressure Tarver. Maybe he's going to be a little winded. Fight right here in round eight, just a moment ago. But Mariki keeps plowing forward. Very game. He gets inside, but it's all Tarver. And Left uppercut, nailed Mariki up to the head. And now Mariki's not punching on the inside. He's in there, but just covering up. The crowd trying to urge Mariki on. Can he rally? It's too tough. There's an overhand left, the big booming left. That's the signature punch of Tarver. Mariki just flashes a couple of jabs. Let's see if he unleashes the right. Carver's, Carver's switching to righty. You don't see that very often. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's intriguing. I just don't remember seeing that much from him. I have never seen it. Carver fighting out of a, an orthodox stance now uh, to confuse Maruki even more. 
Antonio Tarver pretty good with that left jab as a right-hander. Right now, really feeling his oats. Very confident, Antonio Tarver. How intriguing. And coming off an exquisite two minutes for Tarver here in this round, round eight. Tarver missing with the right and the left there. The rookie able to elude those punches off the ropes. Big round for Tarver. Water, 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 water. Look at him with the big shot in that round, here. Listen, take too much big shots in that room. Okay, watch this. Watch this, watch this. I don't feel nothing. I don't care. I don't want you taking no shots. Okay? I don't care if you feel or not. Don't take no stupid punches. No, listen to what I'm saying. Make it a dog fight. Don't do Antonio Tarver using the jab and the straight left hand. This is what he does, and he does it so well. If you stay on the outside, and especially if you square up a little, he'll hit you with that. And then the counter left hand, that's been another big weapon, and the uppercut has been a very important part of his arsenal and the, count, and the combination punching from Tarver as well. Okay, when you finish, step to the side, okay? Okay, let's go. Yeah, that's what it Tarver may be starting to pull away now. That was a terrific eighth round for the former champion. Well, his rhythm has gotten better and better as this fight has gone on, and Elder Mariki has been a little bit less active each round when he gets on the inside against Tarver. Tarver slips. On the logo there, which is so happens. Things. It often happens. Whenever it gets uh, wet, there's moisture on it. That is the case. Tarver also keeping himself off the ropes a little bit more, which is uh, a good idea. In the center of the ring, he's in better shape, and he can't wait uh, for later this month, on June 22nd, the uh, Frank Shamrock Phil Duroni matchup. Tarver, of course, wants high profile, big money fights. Is he showing, though, that he's ready for a big money fight? Well, that's the big question. You know, he's he's in there uh, struggling a bit against Elvin Mariki, who is at this moment a B-level uh, light heavyweight and uh, winning on all the scorecards in press row, obviously, and winning on my scorecard 78-75 as well. I mean, he's a guy talking about fighting Bernard Hopkins again. And obviously, all the Chad Dawson talk is in the air in this arena. I mean, anything's possible in boxing. Tarver Jones 4 could materialize. Who knows? You never know. But, he, you know, he might, I'm sure, given the fact that right now he is taking control of this fight, he would say, and, and the argument would be a sound one, it took me a while to get my rhythm. But once I got my rhythm, I showed that I was the better fighter in that. But right now, he had better be thinking about no one else but Elver Mariki. Yeah, that's for sure. Now, Mariki on the inside, active, but his punches not with as much steam as they had earlier. Mariki winging his punches. And remember, Mariki has never seen a round nine, so this is new territory for him. And he's not faring well in it. These punches telegraphed, being blocked easily by Tarver. Those punches to the body, uh, not extremely effective. The uh, rookie's punches have lost a lot of steam. Tarver with the head fake, several of them. And Mariki uh, is starting to get gassed. He looks like a boxer who is looking to survive, not looking to win right now. As we said much earlier, the longer this goes, the more of an advantage it is for Tarver, even with the long layoff. Because Mariki just not used to deep water, as they say. Historically, the light heavyweight division never extremely popular unless it had a major star. Well, the big man is Chad Dawson, but 
the rest, not exactly household names. Al. Clinton Woods has been a champ a couple times, and Zolta Erdai, a boxer from Hungary, not a big puncher, and Stipe Drew is a relatively new champion. All Europeans for the most part, obviously, except for Chad Dawson. And, you know, it, as Chad looks on and wonders about the possibility of fighting Carver, Carver City wants to come back and clean up the light heavyweight division. Now, those are the light heavyweight champions, and Dawson's probably the best known of the bunch. You know Carver with a convincing victory earlier. Dawson Let's Come on. Go. Let's go. I think Dawson Tarver would be a, a lot of fun. And then the winner against Hopkins. Why not? Even though Tarver's first fight was one-sided with Hopkins for Hopkins. But if Tarver beat Dawson, the rematch would be very intriguing. Yeah, it's interesting. And, of course, Chad Dawson... Uh, and if you look at that list, to fight the best light heavyweight and even the one that's the most marketable one to fight, it's Chad Dawson at this juncture if he wants to be in the light heavyweight division, Tarver. Of course, assuming Hopkins uh, has yeah. success against Winky yeah. Wright. That's exactly right. Winky Wright sitting out there saying, you know, I might upset the apple cart. He's got other ideas. All right. Tarver, back to work. Round 10. Nice left pop by uh, Tarver. Got in, combination, upstairs, downstairs, uppercuts, body, everything, the whole arsenal. It's all Tarver, Ortega looking very closely. Mariki's not offering back, trapped on the ropes. Alvin Mariki really needs to do something offensively at this juncture. Oh, how the momentum has changed in this fight. Yeah, nice right hand by Mariki. He surprised Tarver there. And he continues to uh, let loose. Well, even if it's a last gasp, Elvin Mariki is going to go down swinging, and he he's blasting away. He's going to go out on his shield. He's finding a second win here in the tent. Tarver not throwing too many punches. Did he get a little winded by all those punches he threw? We'll see. Yeah, this is a different Elvin Mariki. It's like somebody else yeah. took over his body. They put a switch on him. He came alive. Midway through the tent. Well, there might still be time for Murky to turn this round to his favor at the rate he's going. Nice body shot. Another oh, wow. one. Those are good Two. body shots by Murky. Several body shots by Murky have to be taking their toll on Tarver. Tarver now looking a little worse for wear. That had to take some starch out of Tarver. Well, now, Murky on the outside with his hands down. That is a prescription for disaster for him. And Tarver finding it in himself to throw some jabs. Murky needs to get on the inside here. He just can't languish on the outside. Do well. Straight left hand pushes Murky back. That is such a great punch. Tarver throws it as well as anybody. Mariki plows forward. Tarver bangs him in the head. That'll discourage you, but it won't dishearten Mariki. The end of the 10th round. Let's go over to Jim Gray with Chad Dawson. Jim. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Chad, what is your assessment of the performance so far of Antonio? I mean, I definitely think he's winning the fight, but a little slow. Uh, you can tell that his time is not there, but um, all in all, I think he's doing a good job. Does he look somewhat erratic to you, and can you see the rust? Yeah, I definitely see the rust, and um, like I said, he's a little bit slow. His time is not there. I mean, he caught Marika with a um, couple nice left hands, but Marika is still there. And Marika is still there. But um, I don't think he had the power on his punches. I think he's a little bit. I think he lost a little bit too much weight for the point, but I don't know. I'm not sure. But he, his time is a little off. Should you be able to fight Antonio Tarver? Is there anything you see that would convince you that you couldn't win the fight based on what we've seen so far tonight? No, nothing. You know, I, I got I got youth on my side. I got speed and I got power, so I'm not worried about nothing. Though, no. hopefully we can come to an agreement and we can make that fight. And if the fight happens, I definitely think I'll have the upper hand. All right, Chad. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Steve. All right, Jim, thanks very much. As we hit round 11, the championship rounds, Chad Dawson, who earlier tonight with a convincing TKO victory over Jesus Ruiz. 
right here, Antonio Tarver with his hands full against Elvira Mariki. But as Chad Dawson pointed out, the timing seems to be off. But not in this sequence. He is all over Mariki. Now he is going all out to stop this fight right now. Yeah, he wants to end it dramatically. Mariki hasn't been down since 2004. You know, Elvira Mariki, he's a battler. And now will he get another rally because Tarver punched so much? His fans are just going wild here as Mariki tries so hard to come back. And he is just so game. <laughs> Look at that wild swing and a miss. You know, for a fight that is a little bit lopsided, it's been interesting because Mariki has tried so hard and done things like this. Got him with the right. Mariki backing Tarver up, trying to get him on the ropes. Now is Dawson, or excuse me, is Tarver just playing Whoa. awesome or is he tired? That looked like he was tired. Tarver trying to end it on one punch and he does look winded right here. As we uh, told you before, Mariki never passed the eighth round. Tarver four and four. Well, this has been Mariki's round. Make no mistake about that. Even with that one flurry by Antonio Tarver, though there's time left in it, and Tarver is probably good for another rally, and there it is. We approach the final minute of round 11. Both fighters showing weariness. The other key point about some of these rounds are Mariki has landed a lot more body punches than headshots, and Tarver has landed clean headshots, which are more clear to the judges. Not sure Tarver had this quite in mind as far as the length of this fight. Tarver probably turning this 11th round maybe to his advantage. It's a very close round. Mariki up on his toes. And now it's actually Tarver who looks the more tired of the two. What ebb and flow. <laughs> Heading for the bell in round 11. It's a pretty good two-way action. fans in the background and they are in tremendous emotional support of their bloodied hero they're all they're here from the Bronx to support them you got to dig deep son put your heart on the line go there and watch son all right don't stop even coming and his flurry and then he's over fourth fourth 20 seconds then he's done the rest of the run is yours just step to a bomb son come on this was, in the last round, a sequence in which both men did some good work. Tarver turned it on and looked like he was going to try and get Mariki out of there. However, Elvira Mariki was not cooperating, and he knew that he had to do something offensively. He started ripping shots to the body of Tarver and the head. I mean, this was an impressive sequence because Mariki looked like he could be almost out of this fight, and he came back to have a pretty good round, though one I still gave to Tarver. Mariki up several seconds before Tarver. A show of confidence that he is more raring to go here in the 12th and final round. Colin Morgan said the headline after this fight will read, Elbear shocks Tarver, who's next? Well, I'm not so sure that's going to happen, but Mariki has won a lot of fans. He has fought as well as he could fight in this fight. And, of course, not ever having been past eight rounds is somewhat of a hindrance for him. And Good left hand got in by Tarver. Tarver raking him over the coals. This has been a pattern. We've seen Tarver good early in the rounds, in the last five or six rounds, and then Mariki comes on a bit. Nice Maybe. left uppercut by Tarver. Back to the body goes Mariki. And I'm going to give Antonio Tarver his props. He's been hit with some big body shots, and you know what? It hasn't completely slowed him down. Mariki going to work with Tarver on the ropes. Not landing a lot. Yeah, a lot of that is hitting gloves. It looks good. It looks good to the fans. Press row, Tarver pulling away. I got a 108-102 for Tarver. 
This is one of those not close fights that was fun to watch. Exactly. We've had a few of those. Yes, we have. One of them involving the late Diego Corrales yeah. recently against Joshua Plotty. Plotty. Yeah. In Springfield, Missouri. Ricky continues to apply the pressure. Wow, I'll tell you, he's these shots. He's landed a lot of good body shots, Mariki. Ricky. I'm sure he's gotten Tarver's respect. There's no question. Tarver missing with a wild left. This is when Antonio Tarver's not at his best. Switches to righty, gets inside, throws a lot of wild punches. Now, maybe he can get away with that against Alvin Mariki. Nice, oh, nice hook. Nice wow. left hook by, by Tarver with a minute to go in the 12th. Tarver wants to end this in some dramatic fashion, but Mariki won't allow it. Elvir Mariki so badly does not want to get knocked out in this fight. This exactly. is a tough time for him. He may lose, but he wants to remain on his feet. This crowd is standing. A courageous effort by Elvir Mariki in Antonio Tarver's first fight back. 25 seconds remaining. Mariki just keeps coming forward and throwing. The fans of the stands are emulating Mariki. They're doing their own shadow boxing. It's a great sight. Now Tarver with a few, but they did not land. Final seconds of round 12. Mareki raises his hands. He thinks he's got it. And that's it. Well, how would you assess after a year layoff for Antonio Tarver? You know, and, and it was a mixed bag for him, obviously. However, he did a lot of good offensive things in this fight. There were many times when we saw the quintessential Antonio Tarver with the good jab, the good straight left hand. I think, it, all in all, it was the kind of effort he might have truly expected if you gave him sodium pentothal before this fight yeah. and said, and he told the truth. I think this is the kind of effort he would have anticipated. Just, One don't, put anything. Just don't put anything in his room service. Yeah, exactly, that's right. Um, I think this is the kind of effort. A good one in spots, but not as perfect as you would expect after a year layoff. So that's it. Did he prove that he was an A-list light heavyweight? Probably not, but I'll tell you what, he proved that he's a B-list one, maybe a B-plus list one. Well, he, he's going to make some noise as a result of this. His stock goes up. Boy, there was some terrific uh, two-way toe-to-toe action in the middle of the fight. And here we are, as a right-hander, interestingly, Tarver, Fighting kind of Mariki's fight, but doing a very good job there and landing some very big punches. Mariki showing the bravado that he showed in several instances during the course of this fight. That's, that's Antonio Tarver getting away with some stuff, kind of squaring himself up and lunging ahead and landing punches. But against Mariki, he was able to do it. Uh, whether he would be able to against a better light heavyweight like a Chad Dawson or some of the other champions remains to be seen. But Antonio Tarver, no question, got the job done tonight in terms of a victory. At least we believe that. Hey, maybe Mariki was auditioning for Rocky Seven. <laughs> An interested bystander we just heard from uh, Chad Dawson with his uh, son Prince in his lap. Chad uh, watching intently at a, uh, a gentleman that he may get in the ring with in the near future. This obviously is his stomping grounds and getting some adulation from these fans, but uh, a very sharp performance. And we should point out his performance was against a fighter of lesser quality than Mariki. Make no mistake about that, but still, he was very sharp. Well, Chad Dawson getting the spotlight back that he wanted. And I assure you right now, when by the time Jim Gray talks to Antonio Tarver, Antonio, who is very glib and very clever and very good with words, has already framed his talking points. I guarantee you. That's right. 
He's ready for Jim Gray and anybody else with a microphone. That's right. We are set for the decision. Let's get it up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Stephen Weisfeld scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Glenn Feldman, who scores about 115 to 113, and John Rupert sees it at 116 to 112 in favor of the winner of the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship, the Magic Man, Antonio Tarver. Well, not surprised by the on the decision, but a little bit surprised by the closeness of the scores. Well, I had it 117-112. Clearly, there were some rounds that were fairly close in there. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm surprised that it was uh, that it was that close. Despite the fact that Mariki was aggressive and active in rounds, a lot of those rounds, especially in the middle of the fight, controlled completely by Antonio Tarver. Steve Weisfeld from Rivervale, New Jersey, was the uh, judge who had it even. Yeah, I have to say, I can't agree with that, but uh, obviously Mariki thought it, and so did the, f the fans, and Feldman not that far up with 115-113, and even the 116-112 didn't come close to either the press row scoring that we saw or my scores.